Alrighty. So I figured I should make this video in these days that we're living in right now. I think sometimes it's good for encouraging word. By no means uh, do I plan on being a motivational speaker uh, during this presentation, but I do want to encourage you with something today. I want to share a study with you that the Lord had led me to do a while ago, um, but it's just now fully having me release this to um, anyone watching. And I think it's very helpful for those not planning on taking the mark that's out right now. I'm just going to use some, I'm going to try to avoid a couple words. You guys probably know what I'm saying as far as the mark, mark of the beast coming out. You know, um, I think this teaching right here today is going to help people with just being able to let go of the system and possibly expose some things that I think a lot of people might be dealing with or have dealt with before and maybe they haven't realized that they need to overcome. And I think this video might help with that. Um, and this video also comes from a point of these, these things I'm going to point out with you in a second. I've experienced it myself. I've fallen um, into some of these sins. And I'm going to be vulnerable and be real about it. That's why, that's one reason I, I am pretty aware of these sins, because I used to do these things in the past. But I also want to make you aware of some of these things in case um, you see these things in your life or in others' lives, and maybe you haven't really recognized it yet. So without further ado, let's go ahead and get right into it. You're probably wondering, what am I talking about? So this video is probably going to be titled something of the effect of the God of America, self-worship. Let's go ahead and start off with Isaiah 2, 8. The land also is full of idols. They worship the work of their own hands, that which their own fingers have made. How many times have you done that in the past or seen people do that? They always want to show off everything that they have done, that they have accomplished, they have built, and they actually idolize the works of their own hands. By the way, it's going to be probably somewhat of a convicting message. So if you love the Lord and you're uh, humble, let the sword cut you so the Lord can heal your heart and um, clean you from the inside out. Psalm 115.4, their idols are silver and gold, the work of man's hands. What are they chasing, what are they chasing in America? Silver and gold, right? Well, I know fiat currency right now. But silver and gold, right? You see the chains with the wrappers. You see the silver and the gold and the work, the works of men's hands, the mansions, the fancy cars. There's a lot of scripture I'm gonna go over, but I cut out like half of them because there's you got. I know you guys got things to do, right? Places to go, but I want to make sure this point drives home. But I also don't want to o o od it. But just so you know, there's plenty more scripture where this came from. All right, Jeremiah one sixteen. And I will utter my judgments against them, touching all their wickedness, who have forsaken me and have burned incense unto other gods and worship the works of their own hands. That's probably going to be one of the last ones I touch on with that subject, the work of their own hands. They burn incense to other gods, like a lot of this yoga stuff, a lot of this new age stuff, they're burning incense nowadays, right? The like that we're doing all the way back in the book of Jeremiah, right? And they worship the work of their own hands. And you're going to see something else you probably haven't thought about coming up with the works of their own hands. Um, the works of their own hands. I'll give you a little hint. When they work out the gym all the time, the works of their own hands, the women that was working on that, that booty, right? They worship the works of their own hands. They worship themselves. All right. The, uh, Psalm uh, 10.4. The wicked in his proud continence does not seek God. God is in none of his thoughts. So I thought to myself, what does continence mean in the original? Right? So Webster 1828 Dictionary, trace the word back, says literally the contents of a body, outline extent which constitutes the whole figure or external appearance. Appearance. Uh, also says a human face. So let's go ahead and look at that again. So the wicked is proud of his external appearance and does not seek God. Or he's proud of his face. So the women, women or men, they're so proud of how they look. And God is in none of their thoughts. 
Proverbs 6, 16 to 17. These six things does the Lord hate, yet seven are abomination to him. What's the first thing he says? A proud look. Hold on, pause. What's Instagram nowadays? Snapchat, selfies, it's all about uh, the proud look. The chin up, the glorifying themselves, showing all the skin, proud of their face, proud of themselves, proud of their body, a proud look. And what does the Lord say about all these Instagram selfies? No, it's real. What does he say? These six things the Lord hates. First thing he lists, a proud look. Mm. Isaiah 14, uh, chapter 14, verse 13 to 15, this talks about uh, Lucifer, right? Um, is this not the mind? of the people nowadays in our culture. For you have said in your heart, I will ascend into heaven. I will exalt my throne above the stars. I will also sit on the mount of the congregation. On the furthest sides of the north, I will ascend above the heights of the clouds. I will be like the most high. To yet you shall be brought down to Sheol, to the lowest depths of the pit. Is that not the thought process of social media and nowadays the culture is, I want, to, I want all the likes, all the subscribers, all the power, all the fame. These people want to be like God. Matter of fact, rappers and celebrities have called themselves God before. And you'll hear people say it. They'll say, well, we're all God, right? We're, we're, we're all God. And it's so sad, man. All these, all these verses I'm going over with you. I was living under this deception, this proud look, and I thought God was okay with me back then. So God was not happy with me then. If, if I were to die to my sin back then, even though I thought God was okay with me, I would have went straight to hell. Because I was living just like this. This is the mindset of the culture nowadays. And I thank God he's plucked me out of that. And I'm hoping that this video helps pluck other people out of the culture, right? Be not transformed right to this world right don't 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 be like this world so the the culture now has the mind of lucifer they want to exalt themselves as god they want to exalt their booties as god the women want to exalt themselves and the, 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 their backside as god the men want to exalt their their muscles as as their own god they want to look like a greek god nowadays they want to worship themselves or they want to worship the works of their own hand look what i built look what i have look at my house look at my car Pride and vanity. Romans 1, 22 to 23. Professing to be wise, they became fools and changed the glory of the incorruptible God into an image made like corruptible man. Pause. Back to the people calling themselves gods, right? They, they've made themselves God. They, they, they think they're wise and, and they're smart and they think they're so intellectual or woke and they like, man, I, I, I'm my own God. You know what I'm saying? Look what I got. Look at the things I possess in this world, these celebrities, but their souls are empty. Matter of fact, their souls are not technically empty. Their souls, many of them are possessed by demons and they're professing themselves, themselves to be wise and became fools. That's how this stuff looks in God's eyes. See, the world's impressed. The world sees someone with that Lamborghini Woo! The world sees someone with, you know, five wives at the play at the Playboy Mansion. Thinks, woohoo! Guys, says, guys, God says that man's a fool. That man's an abomination in the sight of God. Ephesians five five. For this you know that no whoremonger, nor unclean person, nor covetous man, who is an idolater, has any inheritance in the kingdom of God kingdom of Christ and of God. So idolater is self-worship, selfies, always taking the selfies, always, always self-worshipping. Is that not idolatry? You see, the idol, people always think about idol, idolization as bowing down to a golden statue. Many people are bowing down to the, what they see in the mirror. They're bowing down to themselves. They worship themselves in this culture. 1 John 2, 15 to 16. Do not love the world or the things in the world. If anyone loves the world and if anyone loves the world, the love of the Father is not in him. For all that is in the world, the lust of the flesh, the lust of the eyes, the pride of life, 
is not of the Father, but is of the world. So that's how you know. And again, back to this, what I said before about Instagram. This is it right here. This is the lust of the eyes, the lust of the flesh, the lust of the world. You see it clear as day. Look at the trends. Look at the glitter, the glitter, the glam, all this stuff, right? The selfies, the vanity. It's all the lust of this life. And look, is it really all, all is all that worth it? Is this, is this what's worth someone's soul right here? To live like these celebrities that are empty? To live like this, these people over here? I'm not even going to go into all these celebrities right now and talk about who's who and whatnot. I don't know why I even clicked that. I mean, it clicked that. It was by accident. So, um, anyhow, is it worth it? It's not worth it. The fame, the fortune, all these things, it's all vanity. Okay. And, and this is gonna get a lot better. Wait till the end, guys. There, there, there's another turn to this. So please, if you got this far, hang in there because I'm I'm going somewhere with this. Okay, I'm I'm building I'm building up to something, uh, pretty incredible for a contrast. And all glory to Jesus Christ because He's gonna be glorified in this video. Proverbs twenty-seven two. Let another praise you, and not your own mouth. A stranger and not your own lips. Hold on. Let another praise you, not your own mouth. Do you hear that nowadays? Everyone praises themselves. Everyone puts themselves on a pedestal. Imagine Paul's resume, right? He, he was shipwrecked. He was in jail. He was hated by the world. Imagine his resume. But what do we do in this culture nowadays? Let somebody else praise us? No. We praise ourselves. We write these fancy resumes. Right, these fancy put the put the Facebook pages, Facebook pictures of the only one, the ones we want, we want others to see out there, right? O only all, all of our accomplishments. You see them hanging on the walls, people's houses, the 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 fancy degrees, right? They praise themselves. They don't let another praise them. They're not humble, but they uplift, they uplift themselves in this culture. John, and I should say, and this is just in this world, in, in this fallen system, John one twenty seven. It is he, capital he, it is he coming after me, it preferred before me, whose sandal strap I am not worthy to loose. So check it out. We just heard all this pride, all this vanity from this culture, right? And now we're hearing John talk about the Lord Jesus Christ. And you want to talk about humility? He said, I'm not even worthy to unstrap his sandal. Or is the pride in that man's heart? That man was humble. He knew who he, who he was serving. Second Corinthians 10, 10. For his letters say they are weighty and powerful, but bodily, but his bodily presence is weak. So, and the speech contemptible. His bodily presence was weak. Hmm. Interesting, huh? So a lot of these men of God were not always jacked up like um, Samson. You know what I'm saying? Many of them uh, were not that strong in appearance. Look at David when he fought Goliath. He was, nothing, he was nothing but nearly a child. You know what I mean? So God's not looking for that outside strength. You don't need that. 2 Corinthians 10, 12. For we, did, we dare not class ourselves or compare ourselves with those who commend themselves but they measuring themselves by themselves and comparing themselves among themselves are not wise what is a uh, tinder snapchat instagram uh facebook all these apps nowadays comparing themselves everybody else Comparing their lives, comparing their looks, comparing their clothes, comparing, 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 measuring themselves to this person's life, measuring their thoughts and, and their statuses, how many likes they got compared to their neighbors, how many likes did my neighbor get, how many likes did my so-called so friends get, my 500 friends on Facebook, uh, who, uh, who's, accept, who's accepting of me, all that stuff, the Bible says, is not wise. That stuff is foolishness. When we step out of all that, you step out of that matrix and you look from the outside in, you realize how foolish it was. And if you were ever caught up in it, like myself, you look back and want to smack yourself in the head. What, what, what was I thinking? I wasn't thinking at the time. Uh, my eyes were blinded. And that's the, um, that's the world at the moment. Okay. Proverbs 20. We're almost there. We got about four more scriptures. Proverbs. And we're going to hit some main nuggets coming up. 
Proverbs 25, 27. The eating of, of too much honey is not good, nor searching out of one's own honor. That's what people seek nowadays. They seek their own honor. They seek the, that's why when, when, when they put that selfie out there, when they put them pictures out there, then bench pressing 300 pounds, they're seeking their own honor. They're seeking their own glory. When they put their highlight videos of how good they are at a certain thing, and they always got to show off, show off, show off, show off, show off, they're seeking their own honor, right? Just like eating too much honey, which is just a type of shadow, eating too much sugar, right? Too much sugar ain't no good. Too much of, of self-worship ain't no good. And what are we taught in this culture? We're taught to love yourself, accept yourself, self-confidence, and all these things that push that vanity, it pushes that ego, it fuels this, this, this matrix cycle of, of really, that, that, that pride is actually tied in with insecurity. You see, if someone was really secure, they don't need the acceptance of others. Matter of fact, if someone's really secure in their purpose, like John the Baptist, they could be a man rugged as all could be, but that man was right with God. He didn't worry about what no one thought about him. That was a confident man. He didn't need a six pack. Nah, he didn't need his eyebrows wax. He was a rugged man and he was okay with that. Philippians 2, 3, let nothing be done through selfish, selfish ambition. Hold on. What do you hear about Paul for a second? What do you hear about his culture? Oh, about ambition. Go ahead, that self ambition. Motivational speakers, yeah. Bible says, let nothing be done through selfish ambition and conceit. Remember all those Instagram photos we just looked at? Conceit, let nothing be done like that. No, no. But a lowliness of mind, let each esteem others better than himself. You guys ever talk to that one guy? He's always got to one-up somebody else. You know what I'm saying? He's got to share that story and he's got to one-up himself. You, 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 oh, I, man, I, you know, I did this, I did that. Well, I, let me tell you about me. I've done this and I've done that a hundred times more than you have. <laughs> you know that, you know that one up guy? You always got to one up everyone's story. Yeah, the Bible is not for that. The Bible says, but in lowliness of mind, let each esteem others better than himself. And we see this clearly in our Savior in a second and, and the way he, that he handled things. Let's uh, knock out about three more verses, and we'll wrap this up because this is, this is getting to the meat and potatoes. Last two of my favorite. First Samuel 16 and 7. But the Lord said unto Samuel, look not on his countenance. So look not on his face. Look not on his little body, okay? Don't be looking at his body. Don't worry about that. Look not at his countenance, his looks and all that, or the height of his stature. Don't look at how big he is, okay? Because I have refused him. For the Lord seeth not as a man seeth. For man looketh on the outward appearance, but the Lord looks on the heart. On the heart he looks. Okay? He's not looking, he's not looking on all this, okay? See, see, the world, they, they will outcast people because of this. How does he look? How, how, how handsome? How, what, what, what does he drive? All, all these things, right? The Lord's not looking at that. The Lord's looking at the heart. He, see, he, he sees things much differently than, than we see things. And his judgments are a lot of times much different than the world's judgments are. And as I get ready to wrap up this, before I get to the main points that I really wanted to make on this, I felt this needed to be made because a lot of people aren't talking about it. You see a lot of pastors, they got so much stuff right, but they're, they're still pushing for maybe the fancy bends or whatever it is, you know. I'm not saying the prosperity gospel preaching. I'm just saying they still have like this, this aspect of them that's still tied to this, to their looks, to their status, to what they drive. I'm not saying pastor can't have no nice car. But there's certain tones of voices and, and, and reflections that some of these people make by their comments that they're still holding on to some of these things. They're still, they're still living this life according to the, the outside image. And they, people at some point, they got to get mature to let that go. Um, I've met 
I, I, I've been street preaching um, quite a few times now. And, you know, one of the most amazing men that I've met street preaching that had more wisdom than anybody else in the city that I met was a homeless man, my buddy Pinckney. I don't believe uh, that's really his name. His name is Pinckney. I really don't believe he would be homeless for long. And I got to reach out to him soon after texting him back and forth. And that man's fire for God was more than any pastor that I ran into on the street preaching, any doctor, any successful person that ran into the city. You know, you know that city light, they all got to be living in the matrix, all decked up and glorifying themselves. And the homeless man had so much wisdom from God. Oh, he might have been homeless, but inside he was, he was rich. Oh, he was rich of wisdom. His prayers are powerful. I remember he rebuked a witch. There's a witch trying to do witchcraft on the street preaching. He rebuked that witch. She got in the car, left right away. Oh, the man, the man loves the Lord. And the Lord sees his heart. But without further ado, let's knock out the two powerful scriptures right here. They're all powerful, but this ties in with this. So we've seen what the Lord don't like, right? And we know that the Lord Jesus Christ is the perfect, he was the perfect man, God in the flesh. And let's read about, after we just saw all this Instagram stuff, we talked about people worshiping their own hands and their own things and their cars and their clothes and their money and their status and their outward appearance. Let's see how Jesus Christ handles these things. We're going we're gonna, to we're, we're gonna start with this before I get into the main one. For whoever, for whoever exalts himself will be humbled. And he who humbles himself will be exalted. The world does the opposite of that, obviously, right? They exalt themselves. So God is going to humble this world very soon. Tribulation is here. So we're just at the beginning of it, but trust and believe the world's going to be humbled. Okay? All right. You guys ready for it? Whoever exalts himself will be humbled. Whoever humbles himself will be exalted. Now, this was so humble. Here it is. Philippians 2, 6 to 11, talking about Jesus right here. Who, being in the form of God, did not consider it robbery to be equal with God, but made himself of no reputation and taking the form of a bondservant and coming in the likeness of men. And being found in the appearance as a man, he, he humbled himself and became obedient. He did what? Hold on. He humbled himself and became obedient to the point of death, even the death of the cross. Therefore, God also has highly exalted him and given him the name which is above every name hallelujah that at the name of jesus every knee should bow of those in heaven and those on earth and those under the earth and that every tongue should confess that jesus christ is lord to the glory of God the Father. <sighs> Let's break this down for a second. First of all, hallelujah. God comes in the flesh. He could have came down here and rocked this world from day one. He could have came down here and everyone tried to attack him, smoked them down to the ground, chopped off their heads with a word of his mouth. He could have spoken, he could have spoke a word and the whole, the whole earth turns into dust. But what did he do? What did he do? What did he do? What did, he, what did God do? God in the, right here, who being in the form of God, okay, made himself no reputation. He could have came out here and said, everyone worship me right now. Everyone would have worshiped him. He made no reputation. They spit on him. They mocked him. They beat him until he bled. You want to talk about humility? taking the form of a bondservant, 
coming in the likeness of man, God himself, right, came, came as a man. You want to talk about humility? Men, men are so are low on a totem pole compared to God. They're nothing compared to God, right? That's humility right there. The, the, man, men live, what, a hard 20 years? And he came and took on a, a mortal body? He didn't have to do that. He could have stayed in the throne, boom, in the heavens at all times, running everything. He had to take on, he had to take on, he had to take on the mortal body. But he chose to. You want to talk about humility. And let's check it out. What did it say? What did it say right here? Whoever exalts himself will be humbled. But whoever humbled himself will be exalted. So it says right here that he humbled himself. Right? He became he humbled himself. God humbled himself. He didn't have to do that. Right? Then what happened next? What happened next? Woo! Therefore, God also has highly exalted him and given him the name above every name. So, so so he lowered himself to the lowest, one of the lowest levels, a human being, right? He lowered himself all the way down. And because of that, boom. Oh, Exalted, his name is now above every name. His name's above Satan. His name's above every human. His name's above the Illuminati. His name's above uh, Corona. His name is above it all. I don't care what name it is, what being it is. You people want to talk about? You people want to talk about nowadays? These Marvel characters and these Greek gods. His Jesus name's above them all. And he taught us how to live. And he paid the price for us. Hallelujah. So you want to talk about a contrast? We talked about the vanity, the proud looks, right? All the self-worship. And look at the life of Jesus. Now let me end with this. I said this was related to the, um, the end days and the message that can be encouraging. The reason I wanted to bring it up is because I think sometimes... We have to see the world for what it is. And the more we see it for what it is, the more it's going to be um, easier to let go of it. As this mark comes out and this mandatory mark comes out, and this vaccine comes out, it's going to be much easier to let go of the system when you see how vain it is. When you see how this world has nothing to offer you. That's what the world's got to offer y'all, folks. Instagram selfies. woo what do you do? Everyone's going to age. All them girls going to age one day. All them guys with six packs are going to get old one day. And then what? They're going to look like Arnold. All saggy. Saggy skin. Holding on for dear life to his youth. The, dude, the dude's done. His glory's gone. Okay? And if you don't have Christ, you're going to hell. So, hey. Ooh. You got, a, you got some worship in your 20s and your 30s. Now you look like an old man, Arnold. If you don't repent, you're going to hell. So what? What was it all for? This whole system is vain. So I encourage you, especially if you're one of the people that, if you're one of the people that have been outcasted because of your looks, because of your appearance, because of your, your stature, oh, I encourage you. God sees your heart. He sees beyond all that. Don't let the world tell you how valuable you are. God sees the value of your heart. These looks, they don't matter. Half the, peop half the people that look the way they do, if they didn't take all the time in the world to put into their looks, into their makeup, into their fancy clothes, they wouldn't look all that cute. I'm telling you what. I worked in the fitness industry for years, 10 years. I used to be a personal trainer. I, I've seen it all as far as the vanity of people and their bodies. And if these people don't put work into their bodies, they're all going to age a little much quicker. They ain't going to look – trust me, these people even put work into these, their bodies, okay? Is a pain in the butt. If they were to fall off a little bit and live like a regular human being, they wouldn't be all that cute. They wouldn't be all that handsome. At the end of the day, it don't matter anyways. Because you can't be, you can't have a six pack and say, hey, get to the pearly gates. Hey, hey, hey let me into heaven. Why, why am I let you in? Because <laughs> I got a six pack and the girls love me. <laughs> Straight the hell that man goes. Why are you gonna let Nicki Minaj, something like that, gets up there and you know, pray sure he repents? Some like that gets up there. Uh, come on, come on, let me in, God. I got, I got, I got tons of likes in my booty pictures. God is gonna shake his head. They don't, they don't know the Lord of Heaven. He don't, he don't, he don't care about all that stuff. 
all that vain stuff that the world tells. So I, I try to encourage y'all out there, if y'all dealing with, you know, um, if y'all ever judge yourself according to the outside, just forget this outside, this outside to all matter. This shell is going to fade. It's a moral body. Why do you think it stinks? Why do you think there's BO and all these things you got to do to keep up with it? It's a moral body. It stinks to can. These people holding on to it like, 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 like it's an immortal body already. They want to glorify themselves that they're already immortal. No. No. This body is decaying. You know, I'm not saying totally fall off the deep end and become 500-pound glutton. You know, I'm not saying that either. You know what I'm saying? But the, the, the world puts way too much of a focus on the external. God is dealing with the heart. That's why I think he worked through John the Baptist so much and many other, you know, great men of God that they say Paul was real short. I think it was, I think this, I forgot how tall it was. I don't quote me on it. I don't know if it was like under five feet or like so it was something crazy. It was like real short, if I'm, if I'm correct. Um, it was Paul, one of the other disciples. I think it was Paul, but you can look it up. But there's many men of God that, uh, they might not look the part, but God, God seen something more in them. You see, we, and I'm gonna close with this. I know, I know I'm rambling on a little bit, but we tend to think, based on who has a truth by how they look a lot of times to Joel Olstein. Perfect smile, probably a little bit of plastic surgery, probably doing using creams for his skin that have a board of baby tissue inside of them. A lot of these creams, these people, people be putting on their face. Why well, think they look so young? A lot of them have, literally have a board of baby tissue cells inside of them to make their skin look youthful. Is that worth it? That's an abomination. That's another thing the Lord hates. The, Lord, this is, the Bible says the Lord hates hands that shed innocent blood. So using, I don't care how young if someone can look, if this is through unclean measures and abominable measures, God is not happy with it. And God ain't impressed. God ain't impressed with no perfect smile. God ain't impressed with no skin creams and someone that looks like they're 20 when they're 60 because of the plastic surgeries. You ever heard that country song, that don't impress me much? So that's what God's been saying to many people when they get, when they get to the judgment seat. That don't impress me much. He wants to know how, much you, how, how intimate are you with his son? What did he do with his son? So if I can encourage you today, let go of this world system. Let it go. Let it go and hold on to your heavenly hope. And if you're someone that somehow listens to this and you're caught up in the pride and the vanity, I'm telling you, you better let it go now. That pride and vanity can bring you straight down to the pit. It's very deceptive. It's like a drug. You get high off your first compliment. The first girl checks you out, gets, it gets high, right? You get high off it. But then you need more and more of it to keep your ego going. You got more and more, just like a drug. Smoke that weed. First time you do it, you get, you get real high, right? After a while, you need, you need more. You need stronger stuff. Same thing with the pride. When it comes to your pride, your looks, it, you keep needing it to fulfill you because it never fulfills you. So, but, so, so I shouldn't even use the word fulfill you, to, to, to fulfill you. But to feel fulfilled, to think you're fulfilled, you need more and more compliments, more and more looks, and you become more and more vain in the process. It's not worth it. I've been there, done that. It's, it's, it's a horrible way to live, okay? I don't care how glor glorious they make it look. It's not, okay? I was a six-pack guy. I was, I was that guy, okay? It means nothing. I look back and see the, the, the pride that was in my heart and want to vomit. Anyhow, brothers and sisters that got this far, if you're watching this, I love you. I want to pray with you real quick as we close. Father God, we thank you so much for your Lord, for, the, for your son, Father God, our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ, Lord. We thank you, Father God, for the bloodshed. We thank you for your sacred, holy blood. Lord, I thank you for those that have listened this far, Father God. I ask you, bless them, Lord, that you let the seed go deep into their soul, Lord and penetrate their hearts, Lord, and that you water the seed. Lord, I pray you grow something new in them, Lord, that they become more like you and less like the world, Lord, that you help us to care more about the things that you care about and the things that you honor, like holiness and righteousness, and less, the thing, and less care about the things the world honors, like, like physical looks and material possessions, Lord. Or we can't bring those things to the grave. And matter of fact, we're going to have to point now to crossroads where we have to leave this system behind. So, Lord, may we trust in you with all of our heart. May you help us endure to the end and never deny you no matter what comes our way. 
And may we never take the mark, Father God. And we, may we live a life, Lord, that, that, that exalts your name, Father God. May we be humbled and may we exalt the holy name of Jesus Christ. Oh, hallelujah. Lord, put a seal of God upon those listening, Father God, that have the right hearts and motives. You know who's listening. You know who's got the right heart and the right motives. Father God, seal them in this last hour that there may be warriors and soldiers for the kingdom of God. I thank you so much, Father God, for time to pray together with the brothers and sisters listening. We bless them right now in the mighty name of Jesus Christ. Amen. If you haven't checked out the channel, Revelations of Jesus Christ, Check it out while it's still on YouTube. You know, um, we'll see what happens as the YouTube censoring goes on. Um, but it's one of the most powerful channels you're ever going to find on YouTube. One of the most anointed men of God. And we thank God for his purpose, Brother Wally. If you haven't got onto that channel yet, please, please get onto it. This, 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 this I just share with you right here is nothing compared to the meat and the potatoes in that page. And I thank God for using that man of God. To, he woke me up. Out of, God used him as a vessel to wake me up out of my lukewarmness, to wake me up out of my slumber, to wake me up out of my pride. And I needed a hard, convicting word with a nice balance of love in there. He has, God has worked with this man in many ways. And I, and I honor him, right? I don't worship that man, but I honor his calling. And I worship the one true God that works in and through his vessels for his purpose. So Revelations of Jesus Christ, look them up on YouTube. I will get connected with the website. You like, it, you like, you like the ministry, I'll get connected with it because we don't know where this YouTube thing is going to be going soon as this Mark of the Beast gets rolled out. God bless you all, and we will talk soon. We're rolling. Bye-bye.